I hope you all are having a wonderful day. My name is Yupari and I'd like to invite you into this portrait drawing demonstration. And with this portrait drawing demonstration, uh, I think we're going to add a new material to our list. So we're going to be using uh, charcoal like we were doing before, but we're going to use um, white pencil or uh, the pencil actually says charcoal white. I hope you can read it. So. Uh, charcoal white. I haven't really used too much uh, white chalk with this technique, but this is kind of the pencil I've been practicing with. So to get started with the portrait drawing, I'm going to think about the composition. So as I get started, I should also mention that if you're curious as to what materials I'm using, uh, you can always feel free to scroll down to the description box below and I'll have all of that information typed up for you. So for the composition, so I'm thinking of the composition and the placement. Uh, so this can be done with a few simple straight lines and angles. Think about this as kind of the initial marks. Imagine a uh, an engineer putting down their first uh, kind of initial marks for where they want a building to fit. Think about this as a building process. So these are the few marks that I'm going to place down in the beginning just to get an idea. So imagine this is going to be the top of the head. And let's look at the hair. Maybe I want the hair, I don't know, to come down about here. Something like that. And then the corner of the hair out to about here. So I'm thinking of just the outside shape right now. This is also referred to as an envelope or envelope, however you want to pronounce it. It's referred to as that. Just imagining the outside shape. Now this is going to serve kind of as a foundation for which all of the other shapes are going to fit. So let's look at the top of the hairline. Again, just a simple mark for that. The bottom of the chin. So roughly it gives me an idea of how large the face is going to be. Now the goal with this part of the drawing is just to place the portrait onto the paper, just thinking about the composition. So here's the corner of the back side of the head. Here's the front of the head. Let's throw in some little shapes there for the collar. A little shape here. So that's enough right there to give me an idea of how I want the portrait to be placed. So now we're going to move on to the next stage of the portrait drawing, which is going to be the gesture. So the first thing I'll do is put in a center line. And this center line is kind of dividing both sides of the face. So the model is in three quarter, meaning I'm seeing a little bit more of this side than that side. Now the gesture is just going to give me the movement. It's the kind of the verb, like what is the model doing? So here we have a little access or axis mark for the eyebrows and the eyes. And here we have a little axis for the nose and for the mouth. Very simple. Notice how I keep moving the charcoal side by side. So that's just going to give me kind of an idea of how the model is turned relative to me and how the model is uh, angled. So let's look at this angle now. It's going to be angle for the eyes. So sometimes it's a good idea to have a T-square. So let's look at this angle. It looks like the angle, now this is an exaggeration, it's a little bit like this but obviously not all the way out there, meaning that I'm seeing a, a little bit 
more of the top of this eye than this eye. So the gesture uh, was really about just trying to figure out the movement of the pose. So we know that the model is in three quarter. We know that there's an angle here between the eyes and there's also gonna be an angle like this for the nose and the mouth. So really the gesture is the what is everything doing phase. So now we're ready to move into the next phase, which is going to be the block in. So the block in is going to be the, uh, how does, sorry, where does everything fit phase. So uh, the block in is a really, really a good time to just sit back, relax, make certain observations. Now it's really about the judgment that we make uh, from one shape to another. So I'm going to be using, this is a chamois cloth. So the chamois cloth is really useful for uh, subtracting and erasing charcoal. So let's get started here with this, this little shape here for the, uh, the forehead. So I know that the top of the forehead's here, and I think I have a little bit too much distance here, uh, which is okay. So I can either move this shape up or move this shape down, but I kind of like the composition uh, having the top of the head there. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up. Now, uh, it's gonna be very, very, beneficial to you to use straight lines and angles and don't be so uh, literal with your marks meaning uh, I'm literally going to trace every perfect shape this is exactly where that goes and nah. uh, instead think about everything in relation to one another the whole is the sum of the parts but the parts also has something to do with kind of the sense of unity between all of the shapes. So again, top of the head is here, following this angle down, it's a little more straight. Now let's start to put in some little indications for the tear duct. As you know, I like to make a little mark there for the corner of one side of the tear duct. And as you know, I'm gonna follow down right there to another mark. And these are accent marks, meaning that's kind of the accent, the dark accent for the side of the nose. And here we're gonna put in some accent marks for the mouth, somewhat like that. Now let's go ahead and start to make some judgment calls for where the eyes might fit. So let's suppose one eye is going to be there. And again, as we said, uh, there's an angle between the eyes. Another eye is going to be here, roughly about there. And again, don't be so literal. Uh, don't say, I'm going to make a mark, the eye is going to be there, and I'm never going to move it. Uh, instead, try to keep your shape simple and easy to work with so that when the time comes, and I'm sure the time will come in this drawing in particular, to move things that those changes should be simple and easy to do. Now with the block in, I really want to think about light and dark. So simple light and dark pattern. So now I'm going to start to etch in the shadow shape. So just adding more charcoal right here for the division between light and shadow. And I'm thinking of the face, just the face here as a single unit, not trying to think about any tiny little details, just one large unit. Angle right there. This shape even comes out to about here. So let's go ahead, start to block in our light and our dark. Now a lot of artists, um, myself included, uh, likes to like to sharpen their charcoal. Notice this is not very sharp. Um, recently I haven't really been starting off with sharp charcoal. Uh, now I've been told by many of my teachers to use 
a sharp sharpened charcoal stick all the time all the time always keep your charcoal sharp um, but for some reason I don't I'm not really too worried about the the point on the charcoal and I've also found now this is kind of irrelevant to drawing but I've also found that having a longer piece of charcoal like this starting off like this you hear that it creates a pretty nasty sound um, but having this smaller piece of charcoal actually doesn't it doesn't make as bad of a sound now it's not too pleasant to hear but it's not as bad as with the again yeah I'm pretty sure you don't want to hear that so that's another reason of kind of using a smaller piece of charcoal without a sharpened point so again just filling in these darks don't worry about the specifics this is the where does stuff fit phase allow yourself the time and allow yourself the freedom to make mistakes mistakes are welcome it's just about how to move forward Now, I'm going to get a stump and I'm going to unify uh, some of these large masses. So we have one little mass here. And basically what this is doing is also kind of pushing the charcoal into the paper. We have a shadow shape here. And already I'm starting to notice that I have too much distance here for the nose. And that's all right. Allow yourself the freedom to make mistakes. A little shape here for the mouth. All right, so now the nose looks like it might be too far down. So here's where basically the core of the block in kind of comes into play. Uh, problem solving. So if the nose is too long, what does it mean? It means that I need to subtract a little bit from here and a little bit from here. See that? Charcoal is very, very forgiving. It allows you to do things like this. Just push it up. Now let's think about the root of the nose. Now I know that there are glasses and don't worry, I'm going to put the glasses in later. Uh, so root of the nose to the nasal bone that's going to be so root of the nose is here nasal bone is somewhere here that's going to be the distance for the nose so i need to consider that subtract a little bit here And again, the block in is really the, I think one of the longest, it takes the longest amount of time. It even takes me a long time to even say what I'm trying to say with the block in. The block in really is the stage where you really want to take your time and uh, relate your shapes to one another. It's about the big picture. So, we're going to be moving back and forth between the uh, charcoal and the stump. So I'm going to place in a, a linear decision. So these are just linear decisions. And then I'll probably go in with the stump and then uh, kind of unify the pieces to one another. So an example of that would be with the nose. Let's go ahead and look at just a linear construct linear construct for this cast shadow and the corner of the wing of the nose. So suppose that's the corner of the wing of the nose and this is the cast shadow. So now I have made a very distinct linear linear boundary there. So what I'm going to do now is take the stump and take right from the charcoal that I place down with these lines. Notice how I'm taking the charcoal right off of that and I'm going to move it and create a tone with it. Now primarily 
my focus is to work on just light and shadow. But little instances like this, uh, where we're going to get a little tiny little half tone there, is quite all right. And again, right back into the linear construct. Let's do the same kind of thing with the mouth. So suppose that the mouth is going to go there. So here's the back side of the mouth. I'm also making a decision, or sorry, I'm also making an observation that the filtrum. So the filtrum is basically this little shape here between the, uh, let's make a mark for it. So this is the root of the nose and the top of the middle of the mouth. So if this is the top portion of the middle of the mouth, the filtrum is going to be this little teardrop looking shape right there. So the filtrum is kind of smaller, uh, significantly smaller in relation to the chin. I tend to relate the filtrum to the chin. So again, notice how I made a, a line for the mouth and then I used the stump to turn that into a mass. So remember mass just means the, basically the, uh, this large area of tone. So the chin, so suppose the bottom of the chin is right there. So the chin, I'm comparing this distance here from the bottom of the lower lip. So this point to this point, I'm relating this shape from this point to that point. And that's all I'm doing, just relating shapes. So let's go ahead and put in the glasses while we're at this. So there's gonna be a very distinct dark shape here. It's gonna come out to here. And again, I'm not being too literal. I'm not telling the viewer literally this is going to be my final decision. Rather, I'm giving myself room to figure things out. A little shape over there. This actually sways down a little bit more. A little bit out like that. And then while I'm uh, putting in the glasses, it's also going to help me kind of see some of the light and dark patterns that I need to place in there eventually. Dark shape out there. And a little bit out here. Now that I have a little shape there for the glasses, I'm going to go ahead and subtract some light here. Very distinct light shape there that I didn't have before. We're going to move this down to here. Now remember, kind of going back and forth between line and mass. So notice how I put a line in there, and now I'm going to take the charcoal from that and start to create a mass. I'm gonna switch back to the chamois. A little shape there. Back to the stump. And we're gonna do the same kind of thing to the other side. A little bit of light there. Let's take some of the charcoal, even from the glasses, stump it in there. Now let's look at the corner here. It's a little corner there for the back. So I'm thinking of this little shape here. It's kind of smaller. Now we're gonna move up again. And now we can see that this shape is going to actually come out a little further. So let's use the stump. So notice with the stump, I have tape over here. So this is the dark side of the stump where I can do things like this. Add, add some uh, charcoal or with this, the light portion, I kind of clean it off with the chamois. I can subtract, see that? So 
I'm pushing that shape out a little bit. Pushing that shape in. This comes out a little further and then comes back in here. Just take your time and relax with the block in. Just relate all of the pieces to one another. Shape goes down here. Even have a little bit of dark over here. Now with the dark side of the stump. Push that in a little bit. And hey, even let's just have fun with this. Subtracting from the light side of the stump. And see that? Now we have a little shape there for the teeth. Now again, don't be too literal. Observe shape. Now this can actually adjust the shape a little bit. So I'm moving back and forth between the stump and the charcoal. This comes out a little bit like this. A little shape down there. I think the mouth, let's put a little dark shape there. This goes in. So notice how I defined this shape a little bit with the line. Now going back in with the stump, kind of unifying all of that together. A little dark shape there. And again, my, my focus is on light and dark. But areas like this where we have a little shape for the half tone, and that's quite all right. This comes down a little further. So let's take the light side of the stump, just subtract a little bit here. So we're basically basically setting ourselves up for the next uh, phase of the portrait, which is going to be kind of like, uh, what should we call it? Let's call it the foundation image, or you can think of it as a posterized image, uh, where we're just going to kind of uh, just leave maybe three or four tones and then um, from that point, we'll, we'll set ourselves up for the uh, selective rendering phase. But again, just really trying to focus on these shapes. So after sitting back, I think I still have too much distance from here to here. And that decision I'm just making optically. So I'm just going to cut that down a little bit. I think I did need a little bit more distance from this point to this point. Just cutting that shape down a little bit. Now I'm going to switch back to the stump. Always moving back and forth between the mass and the line. So let's take a look at now the back of the side of the forehead. It's actually a shape that comes out like that. All right, so I'm going to switch to a smaller stump. And I'm going to try and get a little more specific now with these light and dark patterns. So this little stump, just like the larger one, has a light and a dark area. So I'm just using the light area of the stump. I'm going to make this shape a little more specific now. Tracting a little bit from here. And then with the dark side of the stump, I'm going to push this dark shape down. Now with the 
light side of the stump. Get a little more light here. So I'm just subtracting a little more light up here. Now with the dark side of the stump, I'm going to take some of the charcoal from the hair and add this little shadow here. It's a little cast shadow being casted from the glasses. We also have a little dark shape over here. Now I'm going to adjust this edge. I'm actually going to soften this edge here, the cast shadow of the nose. But I want to leave the lights open because again, we're going to go in with the, um, the white charcoal. Now for the mouth, I'm actually going to subtract a little bit. And while I'm subtracting, I'm going to move this shape up. And I'm also going to soften the edge between the upper lip and the light side here. Now with the dark side of the stump, again, I'm taking some charcoal from the hair, making this little shape even darker down here. Going to soften this edge even more. Trying to push the charcoal into the surface of the paper. Little shape here. Again, I'm just taking from the hair. Little shape here. Now that we've uh established where our shapes are going to fit. The next stage of this drawing is going to be the, uh, basically the foundation. Uh, you can also refer to it kind of as a posterized image. So I'm just filling in the background tone now with a, uh, I believe this is a vine charcoal, Winsor Newton. Uh, I think it's a medium vine charcoal. I'm just using it to fill in the background. So basically with the foundation, or again, you can refer to it as the posterized image, all we wanna do is focus on maybe three or four essential large values. And this is very similar to um, oil painting. So in oil painting, if you saw my last portrait painting video, I also used a type of a five step process. And I think that keeping the steps organized, uh, at least for me, it kind of helps me just keep track of where I am in terms of my uh, process. So now that I placed in the charcoal, I'm just going to smoothen it out with the stump. And I'm using the dark side of the stump. So I just want to have a tone now for the background. Uh, this is a very additive way of working, additive as opposed to subtractive. Uh, if you recall a couple portrait drawing videos ago, I used a subtractive technique where first I did essentially this. I covered the paper with a, a tone of charcoal and then subtracted the lights, but we're building the lights with this one. And I think this one, though it's a little more slow, that's even how you say it, it's a little 
slower than the subtractive technique, but the trade-off is that this technique, leaving the lights open and building up, uh, I think allows a little more control, in my opinion. This allows you a little more control. So we have the tone for the portrait. We have the tone for the hair. And we have a tone for the background. And um, the next thing I'll do is with the charcoal, the white charcoal pencil, very lightly, I'm going to add a value into the lights. This is going to be a light wash, extremely light. And I'm only going over the areas that do not have that much charcoal on them very lightly. And this is going to be very much imperceptible to the eye. So you might not even be able to see on the uh, on your screen the charcoal that I'm putting on. And this is just to even put in an even distribution of white charcoal. And I believe this is a General's the General's brand white charcoal pencil. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the background even a little bit darker. Now the last step is going to also be a very, very time consuming one. Uh, not, not difficult per se, but um, it will take a little more time. So I'm switching into a charcoal pencil. This is a General's uh, 2B medium charcoal pencil. And again, if you want to know exactly what materials I'm using, all of that information will be tucked up for you in the description box below. So the reason I'm switching to a charcoal pencil now is because it's going to allow me even uh, more control over the tiny shape. So the last step is going to be the selective render. So as you notice, I'm going to be spending some time on this eye. Here we have the dark shape for the pupil. So with the selective render, uh, we're not going to render everything to the same degree. Uh, we're actually going to pick and choose which areas we want to uh, describe in more detail. So we subtracted a little shape for the highlight. And it's kind of nice when the highlight is like right next to the pupil. I don't know, just aesthetically, it's nice when that happens. A little bit of a dark shape here. So there's a tiny little glimpse of light right here uh, near the tear duct. So let's just subtract a little bit there. And then go back in with the charcoal pencil. So now with the white charcoal, the white pencil, let's just call it the white pencil. Now with the white pencil, I'm just going to put in a little, little mark here for the highlight. And um, there's also going to be one little mark over here. Very tiny stuff. So depending on the pressure, so I'm pressing much harder into the areas that are going to be lighter. And then areas such as uh, right here, I'm going to first use the eraser just to ensure that there's no charcoal there. And now back to the 
white pencil very lightly now, kind of following this direction of the form. There's going to be, with a little less pressure, I'm going to be etching into the paper. And I'm going to let kind of the mid-tones be the tone of the paper. Can I make this transition very soft now? Super soft. Now with the kneaded eraser, I think I need a little more light there. One way to practice this step, uh, the, uh, the rendering step, the selective rendering, is to do some still life drawing or do a drawing of a cast, Greek sculpture or something like that. It really helps you to at least understand how much time it will take you for each step. This is also, I'm also considering the time that it takes uh, per step, really. That's why I'm telling you, uh, like remember when we did the block-in, the block-in was definitely a very time-consuming part. And uh, the selective rendering, again, very time-consuming part. The other parts, uh, such as the, uh, the gesture and the um, the blocking in of the large tones, those steps didn't really take as much time as uh, the selective render and the block in. Not to say that they're not important, because of course they're very important, but they're not as demanding in, in terms of time management. Now with the charcoal pencil, there's even, even a little more dark here, closer to the tear duct. Well, let's emphasize that. Now with the other eye, I'm gonna do the same kind of thing. So here we have the dark for pupil. Very simple. And we're going to put in the dark surrounding the iris. Simple little dark shape there. And over here. Now I'm going to use the kneaded eraser. Subtract this light. And now back with the white pencil. Very simple little touch there. And just like with the other eye, there's going to be a tiny little glimpse of light here. Super tiny. And just like we did on the other side, just let's just make sure that there's no charcoal here. And we'll come back in with the white pencil. Let's try and follow the form. Sorry, let's try and follow the form with our mark making. Going in this kind of direction. And letting the paper itself be the half tone. So the tone of the paper itself will serve as a half tone. Moving on down, I think that uh, I'm going to put in this highlight right here for the nose and kind of let this establish the lightest light. And again, I'm going to try and follow the direction of the form with my mark making. So let's go ahead and follow this plane here. Imagine this as like a, uh, a sculpture, kind of imagine the sculptor carving and making this little 
area smooth. So with the charcoal pencil, I think there's a little bit of a value shift here near the top of the uh, bulb of the nose. Remember, this is the bulb of the nose. Very tiny little transition here. Um, like I said, the rendering is a very time consuming task, but it's not the most difficult thing, really. If you were to ask me what the most difficult thing is, I'd probably say the block in, uh, figuring out where things fit. But the rendering is just really, it's all it is is tedious. It's just tedious. I'm just trying to make this edge here really, really soft. And it's actually pretty relaxing, uh, the rendering stage. Now I see that there's even more light over here. Again, just following the direction of the form. And what we do to one side, we should do to the other. So following through to the other side. Yep, right here. So right here, there's going to be a little more light. Softer touch as we go towards the dark shape. I'm going to use the dark side of the stump. Take a little bit of charcoal from the hair. And uh, this transition needs to be even more subtle. So this is how we create transitions of tone with the stump. So now let's see, even softer over here. It's kind of whispering the paint onto the paint. <laughs> I wonder how many times I'm gonna make that mistake. I'm so used to uh, talking and painting. So forgive me if I said painting. Uh, see, I'm kind of thinking about painting even when I'm drawing, but I'm whispering the charcoal onto the paper. Just lightly applying the charcoal. And back to the charcoal pencil. Again, let's try to make this transition super smooth. Very subtle. Now in contrast, this shape here, I think needs to get a little darker. So I'm using the dark side of the stump just to add a little more charcoal, kind of pushing onto the paper. So that needed to get even darker. Let's take some more charcoal. Again, I'm just taking charcoal right from the hair to add onto this area here with the dark side of the stump. So that shape needed to get a little darker. And again, just making a smooth transition from this shape in towards the mouth. It's pushing right into the paper with the stump. Now for the teeth, I'm sure you're wondering how I'm gonna handle that. I'm actually wondering that too. I think that I'm going to edit the way that this edge here, this edge is really sharp. Um, so I'm actually going to make it softer than the photograph. And while we're doing that, Let's put in this little tiny shape here for the teeth. Now with the teeth, you want to be super subtle. And the way to be super subtle is with your edge quality. So making the edges really, really soft surrounding the, surrounding the teeth. Notice how I'm very lightly applying the charcoal. Now, of course, I'm going to switch to the charcoal pencil, but actually first, let's go ahead and double check. 
that there is no charcoal here. Now very lightly going to add the white pencil. Super subtle. Little highlight here on one tooth. Super subtle. That might have been too much, so you can subtract, of course. So I'm going to subtract some of the white pencil. The kneaded eraser. And while we're at it, there's a little highlight here to the upper lip. Simple little highlight there. And then another little light shape here. And it's okay if the uh, the white pencil meets the charcoal once in a while. It's all right. Again, highlight here. Now back with the stump, dark side of the stump. I'm going to try to make this transition here very subtle. Very subtle. Taking some charcoal from the hair. This is going to get darker here. And then get progressively lighter as we move towards the mouth. Even more soft over here. Let's add some more charcoal here. Now let's put some more information for the hair. So let's go ahead and uh, place a darker mass over here. And again, remember this is selective rendering. So certain areas such as down here, I'm probably just gonna leave alone uh, just for the aesthetic. Let's push this down a little bit. All right, so for the light of the hair, I think what I'm gonna do is first apply quite a bit of charcoal. Then I'm gonna stump that in there. Creating a soft edge. Go back in with the charcoal. Let this part down here be darker. And what do you say we get a paintbrush? Start to put in some of these lights using the paintbrush. Very similar to painting, isn't it? Pushing this shape down here. Just kind of soften that edge. Now the paintbrush, I'm only using it to subtract uh, the lights. And in subtracting the lights, it also kind of leaves a type of uh, style. I don't know what to call it, like looking like brush strokes for the hair, which is kind of an aesthetic that I enjoy about drawing. So let's do the same kind of thing over here. Subtracting a little bit of light there. The slightest touch, just the slightest touch. Doesn't take much. It's even darker over here. And you know what? I'm kind of missing a dark shape here. Yeah, somewhere about there, for the corner of the glasses. So let's just make this shape very dark. 
Very dark. Let's switch to the dark side of the stump just to make this even more smooth. Come back in, let's throw some some shapes, some curve type shapes back here. And with the dark side of the stump, let's just soften this. Just let it get softer as we move down, just to add an aesthetic. You know what? Let's throw in some touches for the collar. Why not? If I don't like it, just take it out later. Just kind of hint that the collar, the collar of the shirt. Now the glasses, I'm going to have to subtract a little bit of light for the glasses. So subtract with the eraser. A little bit of light there. Some light there. And over here. Little dots of light here. And I'm just subtracting it because I'm going to come back in with the white pencil. And over here. Now with the white pencil, just adding in some of the light lights for the glasses. Very simple little touch there. And down here. I'm actually going to go in here with the charcoal pencil just to kind of contrast this value a little bit. I'm making this darker just so it appears more like the glasses. One of the last things I'll do is just uh, soften some of the edges that need to be soft. And so I think it's still, I, see, I keep coming back to this edge. So just with a light touch, trying to create, I'm trying to create, create a very smooth gradation of tone. Almost filling in the um, kind of the texture of the paper, really. And with that, we have the conclusion of this portrait drawing demonstration. I really hope that these videos are helping you out. And if you want to see any more of my artwork, you can go ahead and check out my Instagram, my website, or my Facebook page. That's right. I have a Facebook page dedicated to this channel. So if you haven't seen that Facebook account, I'll leave a link in the description below to all of the social medias. So thanks again for watching. I wish you the best in all your artwork and I'll see you on the next one.